Hey, welcome. <laughs> Do you want to watch? What's your, what's your name? Bright. My name is Bright, sorry. Bright. 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 Conrad. Yeah. That Dr. Bright sounds like an Avenger superhero name. Yeah. <laughs> come, and, come, and watch, come and watch this incredible wow. process. Wow. Well, the incredible images yeah, more. <clears throat> there you go, Con. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah. 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 Get this out. Move over. Move over okay. this way. Yeah, I can get a bit more behind you. We can all get in there. Oh, yeah. right. oh, look at us. So cozy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happens in um, Wendy yeah, stays on Wendy? Stays on yes. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so yeah. I don't know who these are. I think, John, this might be you. Those two. Uh, Conrad and is in the order. Yeah. Mm. Right, so the idea is, I'm going to take one image, we're going to put it into develop, mm -hmm. even the shortcut keyboards that I type will show up on the screen when you watch the video. That is, okay. So you'll see exactly what Adobe happens. CC? Oh, it's another program. Uh, this yeah. is Lightroom Adobe, yeah, classic CC. Uh, yeah, so it's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Okay. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> so the idea here is, I'm going to kind of just talk through how we process it, mm. and then we're going to try and do different things, maybe sometimes with Nick filters, yes. other times all in Lightroom, but we'll see how it goes. So, as always, a bit of sharpening something. Yes, we'll touch on sharpening as well. So, are you saying um, John has unsharp images? No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, no, not for mine. I'm picking up on that, not, but I didn't Not for mine. It's, it's more, more for, for John's images. That, that'll help a lot for John. And yeah. Here, but, um, wow. Okay. So, we fix the blacks. We fix the whites. Whack it up. Come back down. So, the areas that are shining through, as we know, is white. So, those two sliders takes us from there to there. Already big change, right? Okay, yeah. Then I'll move up. So I normally go from blacks all the way up. So black, white. Are the shadow areas too dark? On the overall, no, but I might do some selective stuff. So I'm going to leave it. Are there bright areas that are too bright? Highlights. In this instance, most of your gorilla shots, you're going to bring this down a bit. So see, it just tones yeah, the areas down yeah. slightly. Okay, contrast, always a little bit of punch. 5, 10, 15, somewhere. So nice just to kind of see where we're going to. Exposure. I would only touch that if it's a proper mess. Mm. If it's too bright or too dark. But mm. I would leave that. It looks right. Yeah. From there, I come down to presence. And on all of these, like I've done with you guys in the week, whack it up all the way and then back it up. Because you never know, you might be leaving image quality on the table, right? So there's pretty cool. Dehaze. Um, dehaze is going to make this darker because there's not really cloudy sky areas to make anything with but up we go whoa back it up until we like it over there somewhere vibrant same thing hello come back down until it's there saturation and back it up somewhere there is pretty cool so that's where we are for now easy the cool thing also if you hit the backspace or the space that goes this way, the backslash. Right. right. Then you get before and after. No, mm -hmm. backslash. Okay. Right. Big, wow, big difference. Big difference. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, let me just see what the other images where we have here. Let me just see what I'm going to work on where. Uh, I'm going to do sharpening on, I think, this one and that one. So, let's stick to this one for now. Okay. So, if I then look, okay. The only thing I would like to do here is I want to highlight his eyes a bit more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then maybe push the background back. Now, the easiest way that most people do this with is with effects down here. And they just do that, which is, it's a very uniform thing from yeah, the side. Mm -hmm. But there's a better way to do it. Also, if they were going to do the eyes, they would normally take a brush, they would lift shadows, and they would just brush like such. Not a bad idea, but the moment you work a brush, it's very easy for people to see. Oh, look, John Brush there or John Brush there. So, I'm very, very heavy on this the last while. The radial filter. I yeah. think I've spoken to most of you on this. So, what we do here, you click the radial filter, you drag an area. Now, when you hit O on the keyboard, it shows you an overlay. The red areas are the areas that will be adjusted when you move the sliders on this side. Right. So, initially, I want to do the eyes. So, I'm going to go down and invert that. So now the red area is where the adjustments will happen. And I'm going to do it like that. I'm, wow. I'm not going to go too tight on the eyes. My, my, my thinking behind it is that light doesn't fall just there. It kind of fades out. So that's where you could go very tight and do that, which someone will see. Or you just go a bit bigger 
and you blend it out by feathering this whole thing. So it's a soft adjustment that blends, the way that light falls on any kind of contour. I know now that only the red area will be affected, so I hit O on the keyboard to take it away. And now, just to show you, whatever I do will only affect that area. Right. So the main thing I want to do is lift the shadows, just to kind of make the dark areas a little bit lighter around the face. Okay, I might go a little bit more, just on the exposure now. There we go, pretty cool. And then because the eyes are in there, I would whack the saturation up a touch as well. Okay, not too much, maybe there. So, if I click on this button down here, you can see before, after. Amazing. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was a uniform thing, I would duplicate this one and then do the outside. But I want the whole face to be the center <coughs> of attention. So, I'm going to go and say new. I'm going to draw a circle now that kind of covers his whole face. I'm going to put my overlay on. Okay, see what's going to happen now. Now I'm working the outsides of the frame. So I'm going to make this just a little touch bigger. But again, I'm going to feather it. And don't worry that it's on his face. Light doesn't just stop at the gorilla. It fades all the way in. So I take my overlay off. And then what would we do? I want to push the highlights down to start with a bit more. Turn it down. I might drop the entire exposure. Subtle, subtle. That would be just the exposure of the so that area. Yeah, so now it's the exposure yeah. of the outside. Oh, wow. So if I do this, if I go exposure, some of these areas here mm -hmm. and here might be too dark. Mm -hmm. So I combat that. It's always cause and effect mm -hmm. by lifting the shadows back up. Right. So what would I else do? I might, in this instance, drop the clarity a bit, which would just soften the outsides a bit because clarity up in hedges in hedges enhances edge contrast in hedges new word the hedges okay. yes it in hedges it <laughs> especially in a hedge oh big time <laughs> and then i would i would be tempted here to push the saturation up because it is so green right if i've now so i've got one on his face here and i've got one here if i click this button at the bottom it's going to turn all the radio filters off and on okay. off and on Okay. Right, so in this instance, for this image, I would probably leave it there. So we've gone from there to there. Oh. Full frame, looks like that. Boom. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Extraordinary, isn't it? Pretty cool. Now, I specifically didn't crop this one um, because it's, it's he's in the center. Yeah. The hands kind of frame him and that frames the hands. Right. So that's why I didn't feel I need any cropping on him. Gotcha. Any questions on that one? Sure. No, pretty good. Okay, John, yeah. you can stay. Perfect. I can stay. Yes. All right. Don't leave the class. <laughs> okay. Now, I chose this one from John as well on yours because of the scale. How do we play with scale in an image? All right. Okay. So, the first thing I always do, well, the first three things, I crop, I straighten the horizon if necessary, and I remove dust spots. Gotcha. Because right. if I, for example, start working and I work this highlight area, then I crop, it changes my histogram. Mm. Because the histogram only shows me what's in my frame. Right. So we crop first. Crop first. Okay. Excuse me, that. In this instance, I know, hang on, let me reset here. I know off the bat I'm going to have more space on the right than the left because he's looking in that direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though this tree is a pretty solid element to it, I'm probably going to lose it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring it into there. Okay, let me stick to original orientation for now. Let's just try that. So if I do this, and I put him here, okay, let's have a look at that. What this makes me feel, if I read this image, is he's looking at something, right? So he's looking up that way. I love this because it makes me feel like I'm looking into, so this, I'm peeking into his world. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference is, if I put him there, it feels like he's higher up a tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. My deciding factor, though, is if I follow the line of his eyes, it looks like he's going up there somewhere. So therefore, I would, in this instance, leave him down because he's kind of looking up. Yeah. That's just how I think through the compositional side. Right. Okay. okay. For big crops, I would always, there's two things. I would scan the outside of the frame, so I'd run my eyes along the outside, check that there's nothing intruding. And this is pretty clean because there's a lot of stuff. And you need your corners safe. There's nothing. So just if you do this with a corner, that corner is pretty safe. There's nothing like red or blue that pops up. This one's safe. This is close, but it's okay. This one, maybe we'll worry about it later. Okay, so crop done. There's no horizon to straighten. 
and there's no dust spots to remove because there's no blank sky. And this is really horrible. Mm. So then we fall back into our basics. We go black, swing it down, lift it up. The stuff that's shining through will be pure black. Okay, there's a bit of yellow on the side there. So pure black sits here. White, whack up, and then bring it down. What shines through is pure white. Probably there. So there's a very shiny thing here somewhere. Any button you're clicking? Um, so I'm holding the Alt button uh, as I come down. Now, if, watch the whites here for me, the numbers, right? So I take it up, I bring it down, I get close to zero. If there's still speckles, it's probably blown out anyway, you're not going to get it back. Right. Okay, I'm very hesitant of taking it all the way down because it, it, it starts dulling the image a bit. Gotcha. I would rather leave that there and then work on highlights. Gotcha. So we're going up. Shadows, are there bright areas that I want to lift a bit? Mm. Nah, not not really. really, it's pretty balanced. This I would deal with later. Highlights, absolutely, all of this. So we take the highlight and temper it in. Okay. All right, contrast, a little bit always. Um, exposure, I'm gonna try and just tweak exposure here to see what happens. Yeah, okay. So let's have a quick before and after. So if we look at where we came from, that's your before, that's after. Right, so we're going places here. Mm. Okay, then I come down to clarity. We do the exercise. Whack it up, bring it back. Someone's vibrating. Yeah, no problem. Whack it up. Come down. That's pretty cool. Vibrance up. No, whack it down. You guys all do the same, huh? There. Take it up. Bring it down. And maybe somewhere there. So if I look at this now... It's coming alive a bit. Okay. Now, I've got, at this point, I'll ask myself, what bothers me with this image? Right. The first thing is this to me feels a bit bright still. Bright still, yeah. And this feels a bit dark. Right. This, this attention here fights for his attention. Right. So, I'm still going to stay biased towards my radio filter. So, in this instance, I'm going to do a radio filter, overlay it, lift the feathering, invert it. So I'm going to play with this area. So the thing that's worrying me about it is the highlight areas. So I take my overlay off. And I think what I want to do, I push the highlights back a bit, yeah? So then we just see here if I do this a bit. See, so I just turned it in that little bit so it's more natural, right? New filter. Uh, click there for new. And I'm going to make a nice big one here. I'm going to... My feathering here, I normally jack up to anything between 70 and 80. Mm. I'm not specific, yeah. as long as it blends nicely. So in this case, overlay on. We're going to work that area. I'm going to extend this up a bit. So now I'm doing this dark area. What slide am I going to use for this? So what am I lightening? Do you use exposure a little bit? Shadows. Shadows uh -huh. and exposure. So always, always go to the first place. Shadows is the problem. So let's see if I lift shadows a bit. Okay, so it's just giving me that little bit of detail in green, so it doesn't fight for the, the gorilla as such. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not thinking we're going to, so that's before and after, as your before and after, and full screen. Like pretty solid, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, but, but what we're after here is the thought back of how we get to yeah, things. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Next one. I think, Conrad, one of yours here. Okay, love the shot. There's just something to me that these eyes are just beautiful. So, crop. The first thing I'm looking at here, right, is the concept of visual mass. If you, if, watch, I'm going to give this to the full frame. Close your eyes and look at the image. What's the first thing that catches your eyes? Are you off? I get to go off. But it's oh. been amazing. Oh, nice to meet you. You're a doctor. Nice when you have to go, you have to go. Uh, so glad to hear about your hospital. Thank you. Do you have a business card? Um, <laughs> you know what? Not on me. Um, do this. Please. Can no. you? Because uh, it's a wonderful lecture. Um, love it, love it, love it. I trained in mass communication. Yes. I uh, did journalism. Yes. Have you I done some, some photography? Yes, I did some put photography. Your, put your number in there for me. Uh, and then I will send you all the details. Plus two, five, six, I guess. Yeah. Two, five, six. Mm -hmm. Eight. Uh, so, so, seven, eight, two, four, three, nine, seven, seven, nine. That's it. And then add contact underneath the number. 
So this is my content. And then you can put name and stuff there. Great. Uh, new content. Right. Yes. That's it. Right. BMB hospital, right? Exactly. So if I ever have any issues, I just phone you directly. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a fascinating place. Okay. This really Did I do Dan and then, my email. Yeah, put email as well. So I'll just send you a WhatsApp or an email then with okay. all my details. Okay. That's cool. And if you want to run Lightroom courses in Bruni, let me know. Okay. <laughs> we'll do a community project. We're actually doing one in the Masai Mara next week. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You are bright at gmail.com. This is it. And done. Uh, awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Good Thank stuff. Thank you so much. Have awesome. a good evening. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you too. Oh, it's been <laughs> nice. I wish we had done this. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. Okay. You have Thank to come gorilla hunting with us. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. See. Bye. See you. Um, so, yeah. if you close your eyes and you open, what's the first two, thing that catches your eye? Those two I mean, big bright spots on the right hand side. So, you, you want to come here, but it pulls me there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because this is quite an intimate thing, um, I would want to crop some of that off and maybe some of this. So, I've been kind of heavy on this orientation for a while, 4 by 5 Alright. Because it's, a, it's not square, but it still gives me that, and it... Um, it works well for Instagram. It's the tallest portrait you can post. It's okay, a 4x5. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to try here and get his eyes as close to there as I can. This thumb. Problem. Yeah. It's coming out of nowhere. It's not connected to him. That's right. it's so good. let's bring that in a bit. Drop him down a bit. So now we're getting more to a stronger image. Right. Okay. Much mm -hmm. better. This is an issue. We'll deal with this later on. For now, we see the whole image as a whole and we do the normal thing. So black. Down, up, 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 uh, there somewhere, white, up, you guys all know this, mm -hmm. down, 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 there, okay, yeah. now the questions, is the shadows too dark, no, I actually quite like the shadows, yeah, no real shadows. highlights, absolutely, so let's pump that down a bit, okay, I'll deal with the rest of that later, contrast, I always give it a little bit. Exposure. I'm only going to try exposure to see if it does anything for this. Mm -hmm. So, see, even if I do that, it's still an issue. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave it for now. I'll, I'll try and panel beat it a bit later on. Clarity, we do our thing. Up, come down. Somewhere there. Dehaze. So the dehaze is only on the new... I haven't got dehaze. So dehaze, unless you're on the latest version, it'll be under effects. Under effects, yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. On the new one, they move it up. One okay. day when I own Lightroom, I'm going to tell them to move these things differently. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll let you guys know when that happens. Okay, vibrance <laughs> up. <laughs> and then come down, down, down. Okay, down there. Up, come down. And somewhere there. Okay, see, so it's a pretty well shot image to start with exposure wise. Yeah. So it's not dramatic, but we still like it. Now I'm looking at this thing after I've done all of this. I think now the shadows feel a bit dark, but are they feeling dark because they're dark or because they contrast so strongly with this? Okay. okay. The first thing now is I'm going to try and panel beat this, but I might consider, and by hitting V on your keyboard, just have a look. Maybe. 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 Okay, so because it's a maybe, let's use this as an opportunity to go into silver effects. Okay. Right, if you have it installed, right click on the image, edit in silver effects. So this is the new one. Um, the updated version didn't work with the Adobe CC whole thing. Okay. The new version works seamlessly and I can't recommend it highly enough. I think if you buy it before 7th July, it's $49. Okay. It's, a one -off, a one -off. it's a once off payment job. Yeah. Okay. So what it is, it's a separate plugin. It's now going to take that image. Anything I've done in Lightroom stays. It puts it on here for me. It's a very Lightroom-esque layout. There's templates on this side. There's sliders on this side. Right? Once I'm finished, I hit save. It's going to put my new image back as a new image mm -hmm. into Lightroom next to the original. Yeah. And it creates a new file in the directory where the old ones live. Okay. Right. And there'll be a PNG, will it? Uh, this will be a TIFF, yeah. I think. Tiff. Yes. So the cool thing here with Silver Effects, you start on the top. And they've got all these templates down. So I'm going to then scroll through, and it gives me a visualization off the bat. Sorry, Joe, what are you holding down? I'm just arrowing. Arrowing. Arrowing okay. to the side. Okay. That's, I'm not against that. Close, 
Hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. Let's just have a look at the rest. No, hell no. No. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back to this for now. Right? But those branches seem to be coming out. Okay. Really I might actually, I don't normally do this, but because it's black and white, I'm going to show you how to remove them. Okay. <laughs> okay, we don't do this normally though. Okay. So, I choose my template. Now you go here, and normally when you open it for the first time, it looks like this. And you think there's only three sliders. Yeah. Brightness is, think of it as exposure. Yeah. Contrast is contrast. Darks, darker, lights, lighter. Mm -hmm. And structure is like clarity in Lightroom. Okay. You can open each of them, which is the win for this, and you can now manage the brightness for just the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Okay. So I can say highlights. See what it does. Okay, so let's turn that back a bit. I'm not going to get rid of this, so but we'll see how we can work with it. Midtones can come down a bit, so that's most of the gorilla. And shadows will give me the deep feeling to it. Dynamic brightness kind of balances the whole bunch. You can just swing that side to side and see how it blends it in. Contrast. Soft contrast is that. So it's kind of the overall thing. See how it blends it in? Okay. And then here, I love these two. Amplify whites, amplify blacks. You can take the one up and it just punches the black dark areas. White gives you more white in it. Okay, so I'm going to pump the whites down a bit because I don't want that. Cool thing here is if you click at this little thing there. Which little thing? At the top here, there's this little... Oh, okay. It yeah, makes the red line. So it's that's normal black and white, and this is where we're going with it. Okay. See, it's, mm -hmm. it's way more depth than it feels mm -hmm. more. Yes, sure. Okay, then structure. This is golden. Structure overall does clarity, so edge contrast throughout the entire image. Here you can now do highlights, midtones, and shadows independently. So highlights is this and that. I want those smooth, so I'm going to drop the structures down. Midtones is his face, so I'm going to lift that up a bit. I'm going to overdo it just so you can see. See, it, it makes it stronger there. And then you can do the same in shadows, either pump it up, which is the dark areas, or you can tone it down. So you can lead someone's eye with all of that. Fine structure then again just blends the whole thing together. You can decide how much. Now, coming down here, I'm not going to do all of this, but here, so you've got these different color filters. In the old days, you could screw a red filter on top. Right. Certain light would come through or not. So you can mimic that. So those are effectively the same thing. Eh? Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. So watch. I click there. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can test each one to see. Okay, not that. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me say we like red. But then you can tone it down here how strong it becomes. Obviously not that because it looks like this thing swallowed plutonium or something. <laughs> so we'll kind of just, just subtle. Okay, let's have a look where we're at. See, right. it's incredible. Mm. Right. Then, if you know what kind of film you liked, we can do film types, and it gives you a whole series of different films that it mimics. But we're not going to do that. So I'm going to turn that off. What I want to show you here is vignetting here on this one. So you've got a couple of lens fall-off options. So it doesn't make a perfect circle. It builds it in. So you see how it... Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say I go there. I can then still determine the amount of it here. So you can decide how much to blend it in. It's very Lightroom-like. You just work top to bottom. Okay, let's say something like that. And then you can do, just for you guys, you can do burnt edges. Gives it kind of a fine arty type feel. Or, let me just turn that off. Or if you want to do a print, it gives you borders. Right, okay, we're not going to do that. So let's say I think, okay, I'm happy with this as my base black and white. I hit save. Now it's creating a new file. It's putting in the same directory as where your raw files is. The same name, just .tiff. Okay. Okay, so it'll throw us right back to Lightroom. Or Photoshop. <laughs> okay, so there's that image now. And notice all the adjustments are now zero because it's a new file. Right, okay. Mm. So if you look at the originals here now, so... There's the one we processed in color, and there's the one we currently are. Okay. So now you would go here, and now you start again. When you do black and white, like we spoke earlier in the week, I'm not going to be too stressed about the rules. Now we're going to see. Exposure, up and down. Nah, I'm going to leave it. Contrast, maybe a bit more. Highlight, I'm going to try and push that down a bit more. So it's still, still there. Shadows, maybe up a bit. Whites, I'm going to try and see if I bring it down. Blacks, I'm going to bring it down a bit. So now I'm looking at what I want and then just do. Mm -hmm. Clarity, oh, hello, look at that face. Mm. 
okay dehaze just a bit of darkness into there because there's no real smooth areas vibrant saturation and leave obviously and then i go back to my trusted radio filter for two things in this the first thing is i want to so i hit o for overlay and i invert it because i just want to do something with these eyes i want to try and see if i can't because they're so strong if I can't maybe use clarity or something to pop them. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. like that. Now I'm going to say new one, filter. Oopsie, sorry, my mistake. Click there. I'm going to do that. Give me an overlay just to see. So now I'm looking for the outside, outside of him. Okay. I'm going to try and get as close as I can to the bigger okay and i'm just gonna be here more so now i'm doing the outside mm -hmm. and because we're doing black and white i normally go quite aggressive mm -hmm. on this so i'm gonna first thing is do push the highlights down i'm gonna push the shadows down a bit i might then do whoops sorry too much shadows up and then do So now I'm putting exposure down to see what happens. Um, I've got a fine balance here. So there, but now I want to bring shadows back up again for this area. All right. Okay, so now I think I'm on a pretty good... So that's it. this is as it came out of Silver Effects. Yes. This does not bother me anymore. No, you're right. No. Now it starts playing along. Yeah, exactly. You cannot get that much out of it in color. If you look at this. So the two versions we now have of this thing is yeah, it's really cool. those two yeah. right so it's a solid it's a pretty solid color image but this bothers me once i've kind of start playing with it it doesn't bother me that much anymore okay so if i take this back to develop here um i'm loving this this triangle that's created here that to me is pretty cool and now i'm thinking okay i mentioned this to some of you a black and white on its own is very harsh it's like right so to soften that up is a cool trick you go to split toning Highlights, you can select a color and do saturation. Shadows, you can select a color and do saturation. I would look normally, for me, I would say, what's most of? In this case, it's the dark stuff. So I'm going to choose this block. Select any kind of blue. I'm not specific. Somewhere in the middle. That's not what I'm going to do. Now I take my saturation all the way down. So that's my pure black and white. And I just tweak this up, up, up. And you'll see, around about 5 to 10, you start getting a bit of a blue cost coming in somewhere there okay. so watch this click this button turn it off that's clean black and white with the blue cost okay. yeah. it is super Quite subtle good. not many people Ooh. pick it up yeah. but to me that becomes a very interesting black and white now yeah. it's some people call it dirty photography i hate that word because it kind of dismisses the image but i do think this is it's not going to be a hero shot but it's a good image mm -hmm. of the subject mm -hmm. now these things i'm just let's just play with this one and this one i don't normally take stuff out of images but i'm going to show you how to do it in photoshop you got photoshop eh? yes okay content aware so i right click on the thing edit in photoshop now it's going to take everything i've done thus far yeah. with this and put it into photoshop while well, i have a sip of whiskey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah that's always the story hey okay waiting for photoshop so <clears throat> okay so there we go so what normally happens is inside of lightroom if you do clone and heal tool it you make a circle yes. and it looks for something else to put on top right. the content aware technology looks at the area you want to take away yes. calculates tones textures everything and builds it up okay. basically so if i zoom in on this now and we go I'm gonna zoom out a bit so this i'm just going to play with these two so i'm going to say there's one of two ways this is the spot removal tool this one here so how that works is also on content aware let's say this dot here click gone it basically looks what's around and builds it up to nothing so if i look at let's just find something else let's say this thing on his head if you wanted to like i said i don't do this but you're more than welcome paint it done it builds everything up you cannot see it's been removed so you can either keep this tool and just go for example like that 
and it builds it up. The alternative is to go on the lasso, lasso tool, that's it, and then you draw a line. So it's click and drag up, 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 up. Try and mimic it as much as possible. Let's go all the way to there. I'm being crude now, but you get the idea. As close as you can, but would give it breathing you, space. Would you normally be much more precise? Not, not on the line. You want to give it a breathing space because yeah. it will calculate <laughs> inside and outside your selection. Okay. Once you've done this, by default, you hit backspace or delete. It comes up with this and you can just hit enter because it's already set to content aware. Mm -hmm. Hit OK and then it does its thing. Thinking, 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 filling up the gap. Let's hope it's pretty good. And I click out and your branch is gone. Okay, that's how easy it is. <laughs> John's like, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so, like I said. Now we're getting into the cheating. Mm. Yeah, so that, but that's it. So for me, I will never do this in a black, in a color image. Because my color images right. are natural documentary. Sure. If it was there when I took the image, I'll keep it. But if I'm doing a print for myself or for a client, I would right. say, okay, this is it. I've already changed reality here because I've removed color. Yeah. So I might do that. But right. that you do. I sometimes, if I've got a lot of dirt in my sensor, I bring it here because it's easy for me to go click, 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 click to remove dust rather than to wait for light trip. Yeah. So that's it. I can now save this thing. Okay, it's been saved. I go back to Lightroom and what it'll do, so now I've got my original one, the black and white we built up, and there's the new one without the stick. Okay, okay so that's, there's a whole bunch. I so said we yeah. did a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. All right, any questions? Okay. No. no, but if I have questions, we can watch the video. Exactly, exactly, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, and this is all on video. I'm recording. Oh, perfect. It's, there's a recording and it's recording the entire screen perfect. with everything. So okay. I'll send you that. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. Conrad, this one. I'm going to use sharpening on this. Okay. Okay, when I saw this on your camera, mm -hmm. loved it instantly. Okay, what to me, so crop is the first thing we're going to do, right? Yeah. The first thing I'm thinking here is 16 by 9. Let me tell you why. He's looking this way. He's a cat. He's walking. He's walking. He's looking this way. And I've got a lot of energy here going side to side like this and here. So I'm feeling 16 by 9 might enhance that. So let's check it out. Ooh, there you go. Bit of a glitch. 16 by 9. See, that to me feels a lot. It yeah. reads quite nicely. Okay. Now we're going to be faced with the dilemma very shortly, but we'll get there. Okay. Now I'll do my normal stuff. Look for black. Click, look for white, up. Okay, so that's pretty solid. It's amazing. Even that's a big difference. No, it's it? huge. If you yeah. define those tonal values as black and white, it's a massive difference. Okay, so then I would look at shadows. I'm, I'm digging him being quite dark, so I'm not going to change this too much. The light areas, because of the bright um, green, I'm going to see what happens if I... Okay, not a lot. Not a lot. But I'm going to tone it down just a touch. Maybe a little bit of contrast. Exposure, no. I'm digging the exposure, so we're going to leave that. Clarity, let's do our thing. Whack it up, come down. Here's some punch, dehaze, uh, and come down. Okay, the, the, the focus here is the eyes. Everything mm -hmm. about this image is the eyes. Vibrance, it's going to be nasty. Yeah, bring it back. Uh, saturation. Come back. Okay, so we've gone from there to there. Or before, after. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, I'm not going to do anything else here. I want to now look at how I can focus attention one on his eyes, two on his face, and then the image. So we might use three filters here. Radio filter is my friend. I'm really enjoying the radio filter. So let's do that. See, I just normally click somewhere in the 80s. For yes, my, for my yeah. there. Invert, give me an O. So let's go there. Okay, I'm happy for that. That's the eyes. What I'm going to do is off the bat. Uh, no, let's do one by one. Off, do the other one. So, shadows up. I'm going to give it some clarity because it'll enhance some edges. And I want to give it saturation. More shadows up, maybe a little bit of... Okay. And, uh, so if I just look, I turn my filter on and off there. Okay. 
It's not. It's kind of, mm. and it's not overdone that someone will say, oh, well, you did the filter. So next filter, new. Now I'm going to work his face and the mouth area. So let's do that. I'm going to just give it 80 something invert. Yes. Overlay. I'm finding this radial filter processing phenomenally easy. You like it, don't you? Yeah. It's, it beats a brush for me. Yeah. And you can literally, and I think you and I did one like that, Jerry. We did, you did three things and you, that's right. One by one. Yes. It's yeah. so cool. Okay. So now I'm going to do this. So you've got overlapping radial filters. Yeah. 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 So the, the top one now yes. see doesn't see the bottom one. It sees the result. Oh, I see. So it's not going to oh, okay. change. So you can layer them on top as many oh, as you want. Okay. okay. So now I'm looking at the face and I'm thinking, I'm probably going to darken everything else. So let me just get some texture and contrast. So I'm going to give it some clarity wow. and some sharpness because the rest is quite hazy. Oh. Okay. Let's just see. So this is before my things. Mm. And after. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to right-click on it. I'm going to duplicate it. Now, it's doubled up the adjustment, so it's going to look bad. But I drag the top one just a little bit down so I can see both. See, there's both now. So, if I do this, it's still on the inside. Now, I invert it back so it does the outside. So, I know they're going to blend perfectly together. All right? I might open it just a bit bigger. Something there. And I double click to zero the adjustments. Now I'm working outside the face. Lose the overlay. And now I'm going to just drop. Dropping exposure down. To start with because I want everything darker. And then I'm going to take. There's a bit of highlight. So let's drop the highlight down. Okay now I like a bit more highlight in there. Okay. Clarity I'm going to drop. It's already almost declaritied, uh -huh. if that's a word. But let's do even more. Oh, I'm liking that. So let's see, without radio filters, with radio filters. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Softens oh. that outside so oh much. Oh my goodness. It? Let's have a look there. That is proper. Yeah. yeah. That is proper. Okay. So let's sharpen this guy. So. Sharpening happens under detail here. Mm -hmm. Now, Lightroom by default gives us these, 20, uh, 41, 25. You want to mask first. Masking is what Lightroom is the win for. So you hold Alt, you grab masking, and you slowly... T Come on, hold. Why is it not changing? Ah, oh, there it is. It's a glitch. Okay, so the white areas are the areas that's going to be sharpened. So it's Alt. Right. So you hold Alt and masking. As you take this up, Lightroom looks in the same way that clarity finds edges. Yeah. It tries to find the edges in the frame. So remember, white is being sharpened. So black will not be sharpened. So obviously on this, somewhere there. Now I know that only the face and the fur will be sharpened. The black background won't be. Because I, I don't want to sharpen. Why is it select? I don't want to sharpen this stuff. I want to just sharpen that. Okay. So masking, hold alt, and it shows you where you're going to be sharpening. Right. Now, as a rough guideline, I think I mentioned this to some of you, is if I go to, oh, sorry, the top here. I normally sharpen at 2 to 1. So I'll sharpen at 2 to 1, because then I can see the result. I judge the sharpening at 1 to 1, right. and then I present the image, because I've cropped already. Okay. So, let's just choose an area here where there's a bit of everything. Somewhere like here. Right? Then... You can hold Alt for all of these sliders, but what it does, it turns it to black and white or monochrome because color gets done, or sorry, sharpening gets done on monochromatic values, not on color. So it's sometimes often, I'm going to whack it all the way up so you can see. So you can now decide, but you know that the sharpening is mostly focused in this area. So let's say somewhere there. Radius is, if you look at a single strand, like this white one here, there's black and white coming together, for example. Yeah. Your radius is how many pixels of extra black and extra white does it put on that edge to make it look sharper. Right. Okay. Normally, you don't get too much. Easy hack for me that works is I hold Alt. I take it all the way up. And now you can see there's pure black and pure white in here. Yeah. Now I take this down like we've been doing until I don't get pure black and white, but everything's monochrome. See, there's still too much contrast there. I want it smoother. Somewhere there. See the difference? That's bad. Come on, pop. That's yeah, bad. Okay. Mm. That's better. 
Yeah. Okay, release. So now I've sharpened. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to change my zoom level to, oh, come on. Hello. To one to one. I'm going to move it so somewhere there. And now I can turn sharpening off here. So that's without sharpening. Come on. And with. It's very subtle. It's yeah. very subtle. It's, it's very subtle. subtle. But that's it. Un over sharpening is almost worse than under sharpening any day of the week. Same with saturation. And then I present my final image. That is a classy image. That's a really good image, Conrad. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Now, the only dilemma is a cat again. <laughs> the only dilemma I have here, I won't take it out, but this is a very strong visual element. Yes. It's. If it had green over it, that's cool. So, I mean, it's up to you. If you feel you're going to remove stuff, you can easily take that out in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. But I would leave it. It was there when I shot it. It has to stay true. Sure. But I really like that. Any questions? Mm. What do you think, John? Mm. Amazing. So, let's, let's as an, just Amazing. check here. So, this is... That was the original? Oh. Oh. Power, huh? Yeah. Phenomenal shot. That awesome shot. Sharpening, it's pretty simple, eh? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, you've got it on video I'm now. I'm not going to comment just yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is this George Conrad? No, it's no, yours, me. I think yeah. it's George. Yeah. Okay, crop. Hmm. There's a lot of like, visual stuff on the outside. Yeah, there's a lot of brights. Let's see how we can do with this. So we can see on the histogram here it's burnt out of it. Yeah. But I would tend to. So, I quite like that this branch, and he's coming around it. I dig that, right? This is, feels like a bit of waste, but so if his eyes were going more there, see, they're he's not, looking back. Here, aren't they? Yeah. So my energy here, I find him and I do this. I keep circling here. So I'd be tempted to do this. It's going to keep the energy, and it's going to lose a lot of the stuff. So let's try my 4x5 thing and flip mm. it. What was flip? What did you hit for flip? Uh, so while you're in R, while you're in crop mode, yeah. you hit X and it changes the orientation. Okay. So if I hit X now, yeah. just remember if yeah. you're not in crop, it marks it as a reject. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I will be tempted to do this because it loses a lot of my problem areas. Yeah. And his powers up there. Also, because you've chopped the head, not the end of the world. In portrait photography, actually, right now again, mm -hmm. chopping the head off and giving full face is pretty yes. cool. So I might just be tempted then to tighten the entire thing up. Yeah. Because then it feels more balanced. Gets rid of more right. Of the... Maybe just a little bit around the chin. Something like that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, then we go fall back to our normal stuff. Black. Down. Up. There. White's going to be blown. So, you can try and take it away. But even if it's all the way down, it's still blown. So, leave that. Mm -hmm. And just turn the highlights down. That. Oh. Okay. Then I go up. I'll say, are there shadows? There are shadows, but I might actually want to push it down in this yeah. instance. Yeah. Anchor him a bit, because if you look at where you started from, it was quite bright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That pushing the. So literally, once you've done black yes, and white, yes, which yeah. is a rule, yeah. do mm -hmm. that. The rest of it is yeah. Q&A based. Mm -hmm. Do I like the blacks or the, or, the, or the shadows? What do I do? Do I want to dock? And you just move the slide recording. Highlights. I'm going to drop the highlights all the way, because this is not yeah. coming back. Mm -hmm. Right? Contrast. A little, bit, a little bit up there. Always, I, I generally eight to twelve. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try exposure because of the background, but I know it's blown, so a little bit actually does help. Mm -hmm. Bit. Yeah. Then I come to my bottom clarity up. There is pretty solid. The haze back. You, you see why this works? So many people do slowly, slowly, no, the slowly, other slowly way, yes. stop. Yeah. Now, you, you, we, I stopped at yeah. about 12. You're leaving image quality on the table yeah. with presence. Whack it up, slowly down. And then you know when it doesn't look shitty anymore and when mm -hmm. to stop. Mm -hmm. Vibrance and down. Eh, saturation and down. Maybe not too much. Okay. Cool. Two things. Um, I wouldn't do anything there. I would just do... Oh, sorry, turn the lights off there. Um, up, invert. That's fine. Take that off. Just want to lift up that a little bit. A little bit of clarity. Maybe just the exposure. Just the moment you go there, 
Mm-hmm. I can see it's done, right? Yeah. Has to be subtle. Has to be subtle. Mm. Okay, then I'm gonna put a new one because I like his entire face. Give me an overlay. That's pretty sweet. I like that area. Turn the overlay off. First thing I'll do is drop exposure because the background is very bright. Okay, I might, again, because I've darkened everything, I might bring the shadows back because it's only going to affect him anyway. Right, maybe took the highlights in the back area down a bit. And maybe just carry a tad. Okay, so that's without, that's worth. And that, to me, I think, on this one's as good as you're going to get oh, yes. it, as color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's where... I mean, what was the original? Would you, just as a question, would you uh, do a vignette at all? So, I could try and push it back here with a standard vignette, but even with, I'm not thinking, do you see? Yeah, no, it doesn't. That's really still going to, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the one option we could look at here, just as a thought, um, is if we do, um, if you go more, yeah. That beca- mm. I'm not too against that actually. Yeah. So what? Let's try one to one. Is that a one to one? That is a one to one. More or less. Is that thunder? It's it's thunder. Like, yeah. No. Not strong. See, not against oh, that. It's strong. Yeah, so it's if you strong. look at that, then <laughs> yeah. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's nice. Strong. It's strong. Yeah. yeah. That look is, and it's, I think this look is almost more powerful in this instance because he's looking around a corner. Mm. Very cool. Questions on that one? Mm. Yeah. Pretty solid, eh? Brilliant. I've got one more, your your hero shot for the day. Was that your hero shot for the day? Not this, the other one. Yeah, I th- well, yeah, it was one of the ones I liked. This, this one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me just, why is this thing, a little bit of a slow lag happening here? Okay, so, uh, let's mm. see. Very nice. I'm, I'm almost wanting to go 16 by nine, but I like the body. So, yeah. I'm not gonna crop too much, only thing I would crop is look at my corners. That bothers me. Yes. So let's bring that in. Now this bothers me. Yeah. Let's get that in. Now these two corners are pretty much safe. Yeah. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Let's leave it as is for now. Okay. This is going to be interesting because both black and white are pushed. But let's see what we can do. And you couldn't have shot this differently because your histogram is maxed. Yes. You couldn't go either way. You'd have lost something. So blacks down... Up. There. White up. Oh, it's going to be burnt, so let's stay there. Okay. Shadows. I would almost want to go down on this, but then I might lose this. Yes. Right. So let's 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 pause for now on that. Highlights absolutely down. Okay, that makes it a bit better. Contrast somewhere there. Exposure. I'm going to try and drop the exposure a bit. Works. Okay, because then I'm, I'd rather mm-hmm. drop the global exposure and then lift this up again. Yeah. Okay. Clarity. Oh, sorry. Clarity up. Yeah. These are going to be low down anyway because there's so much green as it is. Somewhere there. Okay. And then I would go there. Eyes first. Whack up, invert. I know it's going to happen, and I drop. I uh, lift shadows. Lift shadows. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Now, I'm going to just do one more, and then I'm going to do the rest in Viveza just to show you that. I think that's. So if I do. Okay, so we, this this is like a very big vignette, really. Yeah. Okay, stick it there. Uh, lose the overlay, and then drop exposure on the background. That's getting somewhere. It hurts. That's getting somewhere. Hmm. Okay, then I would because again because I've dropped the exposure, I would lift the shadows up a bit. So you see, I'm I'm playing with these tonal mm-hmm. values. Right. Shadows up. All right, now I'm gonna take this. And I'm going to edit it in Viveza. This is also part of that Nick Filters. Viveza. 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 So 
It's you pointer technology, which chooses a tone very similar to what, um, oh, very small. So this is my before and after line. I'm going to move that to the side. So here I pick a tone. So let's say I put on the nose here, right? To visualize that, let me just show you. If I click this on, the white areas are going to be edited. Okay. So if I make this circle smaller, it will, so it, it blends it nicely, but most of it will happen here. Yeah. Right. So I turn, it's very much like, what is that? Black and white. Oh, like sharpening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So now I've got it on the nose area here because I want to just panel beat these light areas back a bit. So I'm going to take the brightness on that. Mm -hmm. You see how it's turning my oh, nose because yeah. it was quite yeah. burnt, mm -hmm. and you can just panel that yeah. out, but it blends everything in so it won't be visually yeah, obvious. Right. Okay, that's pretty cool. Then I can click it up top here, click a new one, select. Uh, let's, for example, just take it there. So that's going to affect now, show you the eye area. So that's all the very dark tones if you look at this. So I might just shadow adjustments like just lift that up a bit. And where's my other one? There, I'm gonna push that one back again. See now it jumps to different tones. So you can figure mm -hmm. out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somewhere there. If I look at the before and after. See. Yeah. White face panel bit down. Yeah. Same thing, save. It takes this image back to Lightroom. And it adds the second one together. The Vesa is a super strong program. Oops, my photo selected. So if I come down, where is it? So if, so which is the new one? I think this is the new one. Huh? That looks like the yeah. So this was quite bright still. I just managed that highlights a little bit. So there it is. Yeah. More detail, yes. so if we look at just out of interest quickly here, where is it? That was our original that we before we put it into Viveza. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. so mm -hmm. even though you look on the screen, oh no, this is all burnt out, it doesn't bother me here. No, this right. feels natural. Yeah. If yeah, you were yeah. next to me, well, I was <laughs> when you shot this, that's yeah. what it looked like. But you had to shoot it like this to manage all those tones. Mm -hmm. So overall, just to wrap up, so we'll choose one, we'll choose two, three, four, five. What's missing? What are these? I think those be new ones. Because you loaded up six. Which shot's missing? Yours. John? Mm -hmm. John's. John's had the long distance one. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're having glitches here. Okay, I don't know what's happening here. So let's just do. Here's the long distance one. I mean, that is just as far as a very yeah. quick wow. selection. Amazing, isn't it? Pretty solid, eh? Yeah. Oh. Any questions? Loads. <laughs> Loads of questions. Watch the video. Yes. Do you get any answers? And that's. No, but I don't know if I can handle the answers. Right and that's how you process gorilla.